One of the other things that we'll talk about for estate planning purposes is gifting techniques, all right? Anybody who has an estate tax liability because they exceed either the $5 million credit limit on a federal level or the $675,000 uh, limit on the New Jersey level, we might recommend to them to start a gifting um, strategy. And the reasons that we often employ a gifting strategy is because any asset that you gift during your lifetime not part of your estate for tax purposes when you pass away. All right? So you're able to remove that asset from your estate and the appreciation on that asset follows the gift so the appreciation is also uh, removed from your estate. Um, why people don't gift? Because uh, they don't want to. All right? Because once you gift it, you can't get it back. All right, so that's the primary reason that people will not gift is that they're afraid that they might need that asset at some point, which is a very logical um, conclusion. But you don't know how much you're going to need, so to give for estate tax consequences has to be an informed decision. Some of the gift tax exclusions that I have up, list, listed up there, the annual exclusion, some of you might be familiar with this. This used to be $10,000, all right? Right now, because of inflation, it's $13,000, which means on an annual basis, everybody can give um, a $13,000 gift to every individual they want, including their attorney, on an annual basis without any gift tax liability. All right, so $13,000 a year, which means from a husband and wife, again, that's $26,000 a year that you can gift and not have it be considered a uh, taxable gift on an annual basis. You can't double up. If you don't gift in one year, you lose that exclusion amount. Okay. Meaning that the person that you gifted to is not liable for the tax either? It's, a, it's an income tax free benefit. Yeah, so it's not an income tax deduction for the person who uh, gives it, nor is it income tax for the person who receives it. Is it then part of the estate of the person receiving the gift? The person who receives it becomes part of their estate, you know, which is normally will gift, you know, down to the next generation to try and avoid any estate taxes on that. But again, thirteen thousand dollars, twenty-six thousand dollars from a husband and wife. It's unlimited as far as individuals. It's based upon the person giving it away, so you can give to a whole class of individuals, and thirteen thousand dollars a year. The other gift we talked about before, but the marital gift, unlimited to a U.S. citizen spouse. Charitable gifts, unlimited, all right? You can make unlimited charitable um, donations to a recognized 501c3 charity and not have that be considered a gift. Education, you can make unlimited educational payments on behalf of anybody you want as long as that check or that uh, education payment is made directly to the educational institution, all right? So if you had a child or a grandchild who was attending uh, college and you want to pay their tuition, if you write the check directly to the educational institution, it's not considered a gift for tax purposes. And same for health. If you have any beneficiary who might have health care needs, including health care insurance, you could make uh, a distribution for that need as long as the check or the uh, um, payment is made directly to the health care institution. The other thing that I want to talk about, because this is also new uh, since 2010, is that that same $5 million that we talked about that the IRS, the federal government, allows you to die with, they also allow you to give away during your lifetime. All right, so in addition to the $13,000 a year that you can make annually, you also have the ability to give $5 million today. So if anybody wants to write checks today for $5 million, feel free. I'll stand up here afterwards and accept those checks. But $5 million would be the maximum amount that you can gift away today without um, any tax liability. For example, if you had one individual that you gave $15,000 to in 2012, 13000 of it would be considered a gift annual exclusion, not part of uh, any gifting. That $2,000 extra would eat away at your lifetime credit, all right? So that what you would have remaining from your life, lifetime credit would be four million nine hundred ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety eight thousand dollars all right so that anything that you do to any one individual in addition to the thirteen thousand dollars a year starts to reduce from that five million dollars or actually in 2012 the five million one hundred twenty thousand dollars all right so that's part of that tax act that was passed in 2010 those limits again go back to a million dollars next year all right so at the end of 2012 they all go back to a uh, million dollars if Congress doesn't act. 
Some of the income tax considerations of making a gift, there's a carry ba carryover basis rule, all right? This applies for um, any appreciated asset that you might want to give away. Let's say you bought your house for $100,000 and in today's value it's worth $500,000, all right? There's appreciation on that asset of $400,000. If you give your house to the next generation or to a beneficiary, their basis in that house is your basis in that house, meaning that if they go to sell it, they have a capital gains exposure of that $400,000 difference. Does everyone see that? If you sold your house today for $500,000 and you paid $100,000 on it, you'd have a capital gain exposure of $400,000. If you give that asset away during your lifetime, the beneficiary receives that same basis that you have of $100,000. And if they sell it after your death, they have to pay capital gains on that $400,000, all right? <clears throat> the um, basis rule for assets that you receive from somebody at their death, meaning if you left that same house to your beneficiary at the time that you passed away, they get a step up in basis <coughs> to fair market value at the time that you passed away. So if that same house is worth $500,000 at the time that you passed away, the basis in that property is now $500,000. If they sell that house, there's zero capital gains exposure to your beneficiary. So when we talk about gifting, we want to make sure that we're aware of any income tax consequences that might be associated with that gift. So we always talk about gifting of higher basis assets. Cash are always good assets because they have a basis equal to present fair market value. But any stocks, bonds that are highly appreciated, which is actually unlikely in today's day and age, all right, used to be a lot more appreciation than there is today. But if you are beginning any kind of gifting campaign, consider the basis that you have in those assets because your beneficiary might be subject to income taxes on those assets. And you just want to you know, do an analysis of the capital gains tax that might be exposed versus the estate tax that you're avoiding by giving those assets away. All right? So anytime you start gifting, you just want to take a look at the income tax benefits.